The cursed items and phasmophobia can be super helpful for finding where the ghost is or taking that nice three star ghost photo, but they can also be super deadly in getting you killed because using them could possibly trigger cursed hunts. So what exactly do the cursed objects do? Where can you find them? And when do I recommend using them? We're going to go over all that in the video and I will be sure to include timestamps. You can skip ahead to parts that you feel are most relevant to you. We're going to start out by showing you where every cursed object is on every map. All right, first we're going to go into Tanglewood. Over here in the nursery is going to be the music box. Now, as we walk back out over here towards the master bedroom is the mirror. Tarot cards are going to be on this table right here in the back corner of the living room. The voodoo doll will be in the garage on the trash can. The monkey's paw is going to be in this cabinet right here. And then down in the basement are going to be the other two, the summoning circle and the Ouija board. All right, now here on Edgefield, as soon as you walk in, there's going to be a mirror uh, on the wall and tarot cards here on the table, music box here on the table. And as we go back into the kitchen and the laundry room, the Ouija board is going to be underneath the shelves. In the basement, which you're going to see is a common theme for a lot of these, is the summoning circle. Next ones are going to be upstairs uh, in the nursery room. It's going to be the monkey paw. And then the voodoo doll is going to be here in the back bedroom uh, laying chilling on the bed. All right, now we're going to go on to Ridgeview. The tarot cards are going to be here on the table as soon as you walk in. Mirror is hanging here by the wall near the basement. Voodoo doll is going to be over here chilling on the bench. Just as I said was a common theme, summoning circle is in the basement. The next few are going to be upstairs. The music box is going to be here in the purple bedroom, right here on this table. And the monkey's paw is going to be on the desk in the green bedroom. Also, I remember that I forgot to tell you where the Ouija board was here in Ridgeview, and that is going to be in the laundry room over here in the hallway on the shelf. All right, now let's get into Grafton. The tarot cards are going to be here in the dining room on the table. The mirror is going to be here on the wall next to this lovely family portrait. Music box is going to be on this shelf, right? As soon as you walk in, very easy to miss. The monkey paw is going to be in the twin bedroom over here, gripping the ax. The Ouija board is going to be here in this bedroom right across from the monkey paw over in the closet. And then the others are going to be upstairs. So the voodoo doll is going to be in the room on the left on this little uh, chest. And then the summoning circle is going to be in the attic slash storage room, whatever it is that you want to call it over here. Now we're going to go on to Willow Street. As soon as you walk in on the left is going to be the music box. Tarot cards are going to be on the right on this little small table. Muse, uh, excuse me, the mirror and the Ouija board are going to be in the garage. Ouija board on the washer and dryer over here. Mirror in the corner. The monkey paw is going to be in the hallway in the cabinet right there. The voodoo doll, one of the more hidden of the items, is going to be in the back right bedroom over here in the little dresser. And then, of course, summoning circle is going to be down here in the basement. Right here is going to be Maple Lodge. As soon as you walk in, go to the left, go into the blue tent, and you will see the mirror over here leaning up against the red sleeping bag. You go to the right when you enter around the back of the bathrooms and showers. Here there's going to be a little cutaway, and the Ouija board is going to be on the shelf. Then if you come back around and walk or run towards the large fire pit, the voodoo doll is going to be over here, chilling next to a nice cold beer. And over here towards the back, tarot cards are going to be on this table. And then we're going to go towards the main lodge. But first, before going into the lodge, we're going to go out on the dock. The monkey paw is actually going to be in this chair. Uh, just chilling. Then as we head back to the lodge, the music box will be here on this table. 
And then obviously to get into the lodge, make sure you grab this key, unlock it, and the summoning circle will be right here. Now let's go for the other campsite, Camp Woodwind. If we go to the right as soon as we go in, we're going to have the Ouija board here on this table. Summoning circle is going to be in the next tent, little cover canopy area over. Then over here, leaning up against the tree in the pole is the mirror. The voodoo doll is going to be leaning up against this turquoise tent. The monkey paw is going to be laying here next to a couple marshmallows. And then here in the yellow tent on this table is going to be the music box. And the tarot cards are going to be over here on this table. Prison is very easy. Everything here is in the lobby. Music box, voodoo doll, tarot cards, monkey paw, and then the Ouija board are all there on the left when you walk in. If you go to the right side of the chairs, the mirror is here on the ground, and then the summoning circle is here towards the back. But Sunny Meadows is another super easy one because everything is there in a giant circle in the chapel. If you go up these steps, you have tarot, Ouija, music, voodoo, mirror, summoning circle, and the monkey paw is the bottom of the cross. All right, here is Bleasdale. If you go into the room on the left, you're gonna have a couple in here. The tarot cards are gonna be on the table. Mirror is going to be on the wall right there as we come out and head toward the living room. And the back of the living room is the music box on that table. And then if you head into the back entrance or side, I guess, technically, Ouija board is going to be back here underneath the hammer. And then the rest of them are going to be upstairs. So if you go immediately upstairs and go into this room on the right near the steps, the monkey paw is going to be on that chest. Voodoo doll is one of my favorites, chilling with a beer here on the chair. Comforter. Comforter. Not a comforter, but a comfy chair. I don't know what I was looking for there. And the summoning circle is upstairs in the attic. Finally, the high school is also going to be easy. They're all in the lobby as soon as you walk in. Music box is here on the right. This is the monkey's paw. They're leaning up on top of the box. Tarot cards are on the bench to the left. Now behind these pillars, we have the Ouija board, the mirror, the summoning circle, and then out back is the voodoo doll. So now that you know where everything is, let's go into what each of these items will do. Actually, before we start talking about each individual item, let me go over a cursed hunt and what exactly it is because I'll be using it to describe the drawbacks for many of these cursed items. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get it out the way. So a cursed hunt pretty much means that when triggered, the ghost is going to hunt right away regardless of any sanity level and like anything like a crucifix. It cannot be prevented. Cursed hunts will also last 20 seconds longer than regular hunts. Race period for cursed hunts will also be one second. And once a cursed hunt is triggered, all subsequent hunts are going to be 20 seconds longer and only one second grace period. Now let's get into one of the classic cursed objects in the game, and that is the Ouija board. So when you find the Ouija board, the first thing you're going to have to do is activate it so the a little planchette can be placed on the board so you can then begin asking it questions. Now, each time you ask the board a question, it's going to drain some of your sanity. Some questions are going to drain more sanity, such as asking it where it is or where the bone is. That's going to drain 50% sanity. Some questions are going to drain 20% sanity, such as asking the ghost how many people are in the room or asking the ghost if it's here. And then there are a lot of questions that will only drain 5% sanity, such as asking the ghost how old it is, why is it here, how did it die? How long has it been dead? How does it feel? There are so many questions that you can ask the ghost that will only drain 5% sanity. And this can actually be helpful in getting EMF readings in ghost interaction pictures because each time you ask the Ouija board a question, it's going to give off an EMF2 reading. Now, it also has a 25% chance of giving off an EMF5 reading if the ghost is an EMF5 ghost. You can also take a picture of the board each time you ask the ghost a question and it starts moving the planchet. Now, here are some things that you have to keep in mind mind when it comes to the Ouija board. If you don't have enough sanity and you ask the ghost a question, it's going to break the board and trigger a cursed hunt. For instance, if you are less than 50% sanity and try to ask the ghost where it is, the board will break, start the cursed hunt, and you're not going to find out the answer. You also want to make sure that you are telling the board goodbye whenever you are done with it. See, it's very rude to just walk away from somebody without saying goodbye, and ghosts are the same way, and they might be a little bit more sensitive. They take you not saying goodbye very personally and will trigger the cursed hunt. So, 
make sure you are saying goodbye. The planchette will get off the board and then you can start to walk away from the board and continue it is with whatever you're doing. So if you are trying to trigger a curse taunt, you can just place the planchette down and walk away or you can tell the board hide and seek and it's going to count down from five and once it reaches zero, the ghost is going to start hunting and the board will break. Now, when would I recommend using the Ouija board? Honestly, if I'm going into the house and I see that the Ouija board is the cursed item, I'm just going to use it right away. So what I would do is I would set an EMF reader down on it. I would go out, make sure to get a sanity pill and a photo cam as well, and then just ask the ghost where it is, see it, take the picture, take the sanity pill so my sanity can go back up. And that just makes finding the ghost really easy and you can start to go from there. Now, just keep in mind that the board is just going to tell you where the ghost currently is, not necessarily what the ghost room is. Nine times out of 10 though, where it currently is, is going to be the ghost room or somewhere around there. So you can then narrow it down from there. Another good way to use the board is for sanity control and more so just to kind of drain your sanity to a certain level. If you're trying to see if ghosts are going to hunt at a certain sanity percentage. Also, if you are struggling to get EMF five, you can keep on asking the board those 5% sanity drain questions in hopes that one of those will give off the EMF5 interaction. Not one I really necessarily use a lot, but it is there as a possibility. And then you can also use it to trigger hunts if you maybe found the ghost early and you have some objectives like escape the ghost during a hunt, repel with a smudge dick during a hunt, and you just need the ghost to hunt and you want it to hunt fast. Using the Ouija board to trigger the hunt is going to be a great way. Honestly, the Ouija board is one of my favorite and I feel one of the more useful cursed objects in the game. If I see it in a map, I'm pretty much going to go ahead and use it to figure out where the ghost is. The only thing the Ouija board can't do that would really push it over the top is get the three star ghost photo right away. So to go with that, one of the best items to get the three star ghost photo is going to be the summoning circle. So let's go over that one next. Summoning circle is a giant red circle on the ground that has five candles around it that will summon the ghost when all five are lit, which is going to then trap the ghost for five seconds, allowing you to take a great picture and then run away to your hiding spot. So each time a candle is lit, it's going to drain 16% of your sanity. 80% sanity total is needed to be able to summon the ghost. Now this can be split between you and other players if you are playing multiplayer or if you are playing by yourself you got to make sure you have above 80% sanity. If you do not have enough sanity then when you try to light a candle it's going to immediately get blown out. Unless of course you are lighting the last candle which if you don't have above 16% sanity and you light that last candle the ghost will immediately hunt and kill you and a lot of players Players tend to think that it's a bug whenever they try to light the candle and it keeps on going out, but it's actually working as intended. So just to make sure your sanity is up high if you plan on using the summoning circle. Also, it is very important to note that you listen very carefully to try to ensure that a hunt has not started while you are in the process of lighting the summoning circle. If the ghost has already started hunting and you light that last candle, the ghost will immediately teleport to you and kill you. So basically the only time I really recommend using the summoning circle is going to be if you still need that three star ghost photo, because that is the primary reason for the summoning circle, I believe. It can also be good at draining your sanity some if you are looking to try to get within a certain sanity range to do some tests. But pretty much if the ghost is being stubborn and not showing itself, this is going to be the best way to get that photo. Another Another great way to get the three star ghost photo is going to be using the music box, but this one is going to be a little bit trickier. So let's go into how exactly it works. So when you activate the music box, a little jingle is going to play. And as you walk towards the ghost room and get within five meters of the ghost, the ghost will manifest itself and start walking towards the music box. At this point, what you're going to want to do is place the music box on the ground so the ghost can close it and take the picture of the ghost and then run away to your house hiding spot because a cursed hunt is going to start. Now the sanity drain for the music box is going to be 2.5% per second for a maximum of 75% sanity loss during the duration of the jingle. A cursed hunt will not be triggered though if the ghost does not manifest itself and you also don't just throw the music box on the ground. If you happen to activate the music box with less than 75% sanity, it will keep on playing until you run out of sanity and then just a regular hunt will start. Now, there's also the possibility that the ghost can start hunting while the jingle is playing if you do reach below its hunting threshold. You need to like and subscribe to Lil P or else the ghost will haunt you. So I don't really recommend using the music box all that much unless you just want that three star ghost photo. You can use the music box to try to determine the ghost location, but I feel like there are better options than that. Now, one of those better options at finding the ghost room is going to be the haunted mirror. 
Now, whenever you activate the haunted mirror, it's going to give you a live look at what the ghost is looking at. Now, the mirror will drain 7.5% sanity per second, or at least a minimum of 20% sanity per use. So, for instance, you happen to close out of the mirror below three seconds, then you will lose 20%. Like I said, it's going to show the current position that the ghost is looking at for the room, as well as its exact status. So, if anybody is in there, if the lights are on, if the doors are open, if there's like dots on the ground, you're going to see a live look in at it, which is going to help if you're not really familiar with the rooms of the house. Now, really, I love the haunted mirrors myself. If I see that I have one in the map, I'm like immediately pulling it out, looking at it, figuring where the ghost room is, and then continuing my investigation from there. Now, holding on to the mirror too long will cause it to break, and that will trigger a curse time. So if you do get a room that's kind of stubborn to figure out, or it's just like a picture of a wall, which has happened before, it may be best to set it down and then pick it back up to change the view. If you're looking at it in like high school and it's in a classroom, it's kind of hard to tell which classroom it's going to be in. So I kind of don't really recommend it for that. But for everything else, I love the haunted mirror. So typically what I will do when I find the mirror, I will look at it, see where the ghost is, take the sanity pill and continue my investigation. Now let's go into a cursed item that is not really super useful, but is a lot of fun. And that's going to be the tarot cards. With tarot cards, you're going to have 10 random cards in that deck. You will draw them and find out exactly what happens. So let's go through what each of the cards do. Sun, fool. Okay, fool means nothing happened. Tower is a ghost interaction. Wheel of Fortune. Green means our sanity increased by 25%. Hangman would have killed us. Sun, our sanity is at 100% now. Cool. Hermit would have trapped the ghost in the room for one minute. Devil, that is a ghost event, as you see by the airball ghost event. Drawing a death card here would actually be pretty bad. Not with us anymore. The moon, our sanity is now at zero. Back to zero. Death is hunting. Better run away and hide. Then as you can see, everything that we will pull during a hunt will be a fool. The night goes on. Are you kidding me? That's what you see here is we drew a hanged man, we died. Now we previously drew a high priestess in this clip. So why we're gonna bring back to life and you're, you'll see whether we're going to draw another high priestess just so you get an idea of what it looks like. So when would I recommend using tarot cards? Well, really, like I said, they're just random kind of fun. It can be kind of annoying if you really wanted to like lose sanity or trigger a hunt or try to get the ghost photo and you don't happen to get any of those cards or you end up pulling a hanged man and dying. But it seems to just be like all of the fun. So my recommendation is use it whenever you feel like it. If you want to have some extra fun or if you and your friends want to do tarot cards roulette. Hey, go for it. Who am I one to stop you? Now let's go into the newest cursed object in the game that came out in the last update, and that is going to be the monkey paw. Now the monkey paw is going to grant you wishes. The number of wishes is going to be based on the difficulty multiplier. So zero to 1.99 times multiplier will get you five wishes. Two times to 2.99 will get you four, and then three times multiplier or higher will get you three wishes. Now if you want to find exactly where all the wishes are, they're scattered about sunny meadows, or you can just keep watching and paying attention to this guide or you can also turn like the text to speech option on in the game and you can just click on whatever wish it is that you want so the way that the wishes work is that you're going to ask for something that you want it's going to give it to you but there's going to be a massive consequence which is really one of the biggest drawbacks when it comes to the monkey's paw because some of the consequences are not worth it at all in my opinion so let's take a look at what these wishes are. First one is going to be the best one in my mind and the one that pretty much I only use the monkey paw for. And that is, I wish to see the ghost, which kind of works as like a mobile summoning circle because the ghost will spawn in front of you. You can take a picture of it and then the ghost is trapped there for five seconds and then we'll trigger a curse taunt and you 
go to your hiding spot. Now, the consequence of that is that your visuals are super darkened, so hopefully you can be close enough to the hiding spot to get there in time. Your vision will return to normal after the hunt. Now, if you wish for activity, you're going to double all the ghost activity for two minutes, uh, but the fuse box is going to be permanently broken, and the exit doors will be locked for about two minutes. I wish to trap the ghost. We'll teleport the ghost to its room. It's going to lock the door to that room. The ghost is going to be stuck there for one minute, and then it is going to trigger a cursed hunt. I wish to be sane. We'll set everybody's sanity of 50%, no matter what it is, and your passive sanity drain is going to increase 1.5 times. I wish to be safe. We'll unlock a hiding spot that you are uh, preferably looking at. The lights in the room will shatter, and then the ghost is going to be able to detect your electronic equipment from anywhere in the house. You have to be extra careful when you are going to hide. I wish to leave. We'll unlock the exit doors, including during a hunt, but your player speed is going to be super slow, gradually increasing over time, and your vision is going to be greatly reduced. I wish for life will revive a dead player, but the person asking for that will have a 50% chance of dying themselves. I wish for knowledge will remove one of the incorrect pieces of evidence and ghost types from the journal, but the ghost is going to start a hunt and the player is going to have muffled audio and horrible vision until the game ends. And then you can wish to change the weather to a certain type and that's only going to come at a 25% sanity loss. So like I said, kind of my overall impressions with the monkey paw, if I'm using it, it's only going to be to kind of summon the ghost to take the picture of it. I feel like none of the other ones are really worth it. The weather is not too bad if you do happen to get heavy rain and you're like I just want different kind of weather or if it's snowing and you're outside on like a campsite and you're like I don't want to see if I can find ghost orbs in this. I'm going to change for the weather. Those are kind of like the only situations that I would really do it in. The rest of it is just not worth it to me. But you can let me know your thoughts on the monkey paw down below in the comments. And lastly is going to be another one of the uh, old cursed objects you could say only actually usable now and that is the voodoo doll. There were voodoo dolls early on in the farmhouse that you could take a picture of that did absolutely nothing but now they actually have it in the game of course. So voodoo doll has 10 pins. Each of the pins pushed in is going to trigger a interaction and it's going to come at the cost of 5% sanity per pin pushed. Try saying that fast. Per pin pushed? Per pin pushed? Per pin pushed? Okay. Either way. If you happen to push in the heart pin it's going to come at a 10% sanity loss and it's going to trigger a cursed hunt. Now, if you're at like 0% sanity and you try to push in a pin and don't have the sanity for it, then all the pins will push all at once into the voodoo doll and a cursed hunt will be triggered. Now, each pin pushed is going to have a ghost interaction with it. It has a chance of also giving you EMF 5. So if the ghost is being stubborn, then you can sort of use it for that. You can also use it for ghost interaction pictures. You can also use the voodoo doll to sort of find where the ghost room is or the general area of the ghost if you are struggling to find it. But it also comes at the risk of triggering the cursed hunt. So I don't really tend to use the voodoo doll all that much when I have it. But since it does trigger ghost interactions, the question kind of remains, can the voodoo doll trigger ghost writing? Well, I've actually investigated that and you can click or tap the screen now to watch that. Thanks for watching this. We'll see you in the next one. Happy hunting, everybody.